Yep. So we're going to write up our network in something called Google Colab, just because it's the easiest place to get things up and running. So search up Colab, and by clicking on this link, you'll eventually reach an interface like this. Now, if you haven't signed in already to a Google account, you'll have to click File and then New Notebook, and then you'll receive a sign-in prompt. Sign in and voila. So here, we can write and execute any code written in the Python language. Type in print hello world and then click this play button just to make sure things are running okay. So it's printed out this output, hello world. And most AI projects these days are written in Python. Python is a wonderful language and it has a really strong online community which contributes these open source packages to the language. And packages are just these kind of standalone modules of code that you can then import into your program to use. So we have to import these packages to use them. So type in import NumPy. NumPy is the, the main package we'll be using in this series. And NumPy helps us to do quick maths. Very handy because neural networks are built on maths. In particular, they're built on something called matrix multiplication. If you don't really know what this means, don't worry. It's uh, less intimidating than it actually sounds. Simply put, a matrix is just a list of numbers arranged in rows and columns. And if we take a look at this diagram here, this is a very simple neural network. This type of neural network receives input data, which is structured as a matrix. And this input data then proceeds through multiple steps of matrix multiplication to produce an output. Now, before we go into any further detail on that process, let's build our first matrix, which will contain the input values for our network. We have to begin by setting some basic parameters for our network. First, how many input nodes there are, how many output nodes, how many intermediate nodes. And we're going to copy out these parameters from our diagram. So there'll be two input nodes, as you can see, two output nodes, and then three in the intermediate layer. Any intermediate layer usually gets called the hidden layer. So let's change the name here to reflect that. And now whenever we write code, we want to make it as succinct as possible. So what I'm going to get you to do is to remove input and replace it with I, remove output, replace it with O, same for hidden, replace it with H. Next, we need to define how many pieces of input data we want to put through the network at one time. This gets called the batch size, and let's choose eight for now. So the input data for our network will be a set of random numbers. This will help us to focus on the core concepts at play, which is what this series is all about. Now, each piece of input data should have two values, one for each input node. And we want to generate eight pieces of input data at a time. So we can do all this by typing in input data or idata equals numpy.random dot rand n batch size i nodes. And to ensure that this looks just like we intend it to, let's type in print i data and again press that play button. So each of these is a single piece of input data. There are eight of them. So this is one single batch of input data. And you'll notice by virtue of all this, they are arranged in a matrix. And this is very important because eventually we'll produce an output by putting our input values through multiple stages of matrix multiplication. But let's take a step back for a moment just to consider what our purpose might be here. So one of the main tasks we get neural networks to perform is that of classification. For instance, say we want to classify images as either a cat pick or not a cat pick. Eventually, we'll be providing the network with an image, which will be transformed to a matrix of numbers. That image information is then processed through the network, and the output will be a list of probability values 
representing the confidence of the network as to whether this is a cat pick or not. And another way to say all this is that the network is predicting labels for our data. Because when we train the network, our inputs have to be supplied with labels. For example, if I'm supplying a cat pick as a piece of training data, then the label is cat pick. And the way we would represent that to the computer is 1, 0. Not a cat pick, well, we'd supply that label as this list of numbers, 0, 1. Then when we're testing the network, we provide a cat pick as an input without a label, and then the network makes predictions for each of these numbers. It might output 0 0.6 and 0 0.4. Given that's closer to 1,0 than 0, 0,1, this is an effective prediction, and the network has correctly labelled this piece of input data. So going back to our code, let's get our network to predict labels for each piece of input data here. Our first step is to multiply this batch matrix by something called a weights matrix. It's a bunch of values intended to convey how much weight should be applied to each input neuron in terms of the output that will eventually be generated from it. So let's generate our first weights matrix. We'll call it W1 equals numpy.random.randn i nodes h nodes. Let's print that out by typing in print W1. So this is what our W1 matrix looks like. And you might be a little bit confused perhaps about what this exactly represents. So let's return to our diagram now or a slightly modified version of it here. So each of these lines here connecting input to hidden and hidden to output, each of these lines is referred to as an edge. And each edge represents a different weights value. So if we copied in our weights values over here, this line might represent negative 0 0.37, this one 0 0.32, this one 0 0.64 and so on. So again, to progress through the network, we multiply our input data by our W1 matrix. And if the weights value here, say, happens to be high, then this node's value will more prominently influence the values in the output in some particular way. So you can think of it as having been given greater weight by this part of the weights matrix. And now after we perform this multiplication, input data multiplied by W1, the result will be the values for our hidden layer neurons. So let's code that in now. We can type in H, that's hidden layer values equals I data dot dot, just follow what I'm doing there, W1. So when we multiply two matrices, we are said to be taking their dot product. So this line here just says, take the dot product of the matrix I data and W1. Now, based on the values that get produced here, will this particular neuron activate? What I mean is, will this neuron fire and pass its value on towards the output. This depends on whether it successfully passes through what we call an activation function. And the most common activation function is called rectified linear unit or ReLU. It simply acts to, to remove all negative values and replace them with zero. So let's write that up in NumPy now by typing in H ReLU. So the result of putting the hidden layer values through the ReLU activation function equals NumPy.maximum hidden layer, oh sorry, 
H values zero. So this NumPy function here simply uh, outputs the maximum value, the maximum of these two for each value in this matrix. So let's print out the result. Okay, so for each piece of input data, here are the results of putting the hidden layer values through the activation function. All the negative values have disappeared and been replaced with zero. So we now have one final step of matrix multiplication. We multiply these values here by a second weights matrix, which we'll call W2. So that, let's generate that first. We can generate it up here by typing in w2 equals numpy.random.randn h nodes, o nodes. So the output of our network is the dot product of our h relu and our w2 weights matrix. So type in o data predictions equals h relu dot dot w2. Now let's print out OData predictions and run the file again. So what we have here